Yahweh, you are glorious, so glorious in your way. truly seen and not truly heard. And even if you heard it, and even if you saw it, but it's none of your business, then leave it and pray. Then to go and to stand and say, I'm giving a witness of that. And after they checked through the whole thing, they realized that what you said was even wrong. Beloved, never be a witness of anything that you know has nothing to do with you. Especially if God you know, it's against it. Please drop out. To be a true witness should be according to God's will. But never be a false witness. Because God has marked it on the masses of that calendar last year. That means for such ones, I will not look to them nor bless them. You will go through the nice year, but you won't enjoy it. A false witness. Be careful what you say about your brother and your sister to your neighbor. Be careful when they ask you a question. What you say to testify when you know what you say is not true. The fact that you hate the person doesn't mean it's now an opportunity for you to use lie as a weapon to destroy. Be careful because God is going to retaliate very sharply. Because whilst God is going to increase the blessing, He's also going to fight. Be very careful here. And the seventh one, a discord seed sower. One who is a disconnector. One who is always in a group trying to bring confusion. A divisive man or woman. God says, I'm going to hate you. That's what God put the word number seven. He says, these six things the Lord hates. And yes, seven are an abomination. In fact, if you are disconnected, you are the greatest abomination. I mean, I mean the, the abomination of all abominations. God doesn't want to have fellowship with you. In the church, your own, in your marriage, in your business, wherever human beings are going to socially out for you, when you are there, you are trying to break things apart. You will break apart until you break your own marriage apart. But it's a spirit that is trying to hire you. And you must avoid to receive that employment. Seven things God is against. So to enjoy 2014, as in your first seven part, it's a warning. Avoid being proud, becoming a liar, Somebody whose hands points to shed innocent blood or destroy even. Somebody whose heart is full of wicked plans against a neighbor. Somebody who is swift to go and cause mischief or do evil or spread evil from house to house. Somebody who is giving a false witness and somebody who is a disconnector. Uh, better you leave Bremen and go and stay in her Connecticut. <laughs> Look, Connecticut, they, they connect and they cut it. Uh -huh. It means never ever practice a habit whereby you are always divisive and splitting people apart yes. and trying to build some secret groups. 
Never try it. Next year is dangerous. Somebody say warning. warning. Say warning. warning. Say it again. Say warning. warning. Good. That's that trumpet will sound because every time a trumpet is sounded, what happened? Sword follows. Before the sword will hit or cut, the Bible says, sound the trumpet for me. If you are proud, repent. If that spirit of Lucifer is in you, cast it out. If you know that I mean you lie and you, and you, you love lying, beloved, that God will not smile on you next year from now. Throw the line because lie belongs to Satan. The Bible says he's the father of all liars. So why must you become Satan's son? When Jesus Christ said, I'm the truth, he wants you to be his son. So don't try to uh, you know, leave one father to another father. So now God is saying to you, your heart must what? repent. If your heart does not change from the evil, God will not smile on you. And if all what I repeated again to you, because I may not repeat it again to you, if you go home and read Proverbs 16 to 19 and pray about it and say, God, I know I have a problem here, number one. Maybe number three is your problem. Maybe number, 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 three, number seven. Whichever the number is, if all to ask God to remove it for you, he will do that one. Drop it and let bury it with number 13 to go. And the next time you will see God's glory coming upon you. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Because God is going to release a grace from his own seven portions right now. And God will give you, I will give you the second seven. But God has his own servants. That, that one, nothing to do with human effort. When God himself begins to allow his seven spirit to become a monitor over you, to help you, he will release that for you. Again, God shall release the voice of his seven thunders. In the book of Revelation, chapter uh, 3, verse 1, we have the seven spirit of God. If you talk about thunders, Revelation 10, 4, we have the seven, the seven thunders of God. They utter voices. And the voices are not to destroy the righteous. But God can let the voice of the seven thunders really roll out if all these seven thunders you have been able to cut them off. I said, the voice of the thunders of Jehovah, not Paul, but Jehovah himself shall command. He who made the thunder, he will let the thunder speak for you. Say somebody say amen. amen. This is spiritual thing very deep, so you don't get me now. Listen to me. I said, if you can avoid these seven things I told you, God himself, by the power of his seven spirit, shall raise up the seven thunder voices, and they will speak on your behalf. Just say amen. amen. So you don't need to know too much theology. It's enough for that one. He will speak for you. Because if you are trying to avoid pride, haughtiness, and lies, and all this wickedness, and you say in holiness, I said Jehovah God will speak on your behalf. Amen. And above all, the Bible tells me that he will lift up his seven stars. His seven stars will come and govern over your life. That means seven stars will illuminate your path. And as soon as the seven spirit of God is lifted up, and the seven thunder voices are released, and the seven stars are presented to illuminate your ways. Because God has a destiny prepared for you. There is a destination waiting for you. So as I talk to you from the natural realm to the spiritual realm, God has a way he wants to prepare you. Because you are not going to be a natural human being forever. He wants to transform you from flesh and blood to the spiritual being. From corruptible to incorruptible. So I speak to you a spiritual language so you understand that, that even though we live here in the flesh, we don't war after the flesh. And even though we can see natural things here, the spiritual is also here and has come to stay. So God will make sure that if you obey him, he allowed the supernatural to come from eternity to time. And I said that some people begin to pray for you. Anything that wants to fight you to hinder you from enjoying God's grace, I said the seven voices of the thunders of God will speak for you. Amen. And because God wants your horizon to become very bright, as I told you, the seven stars, which are also of the seven spirit of God, will begin to shine and illuminate your ways and your path. Amen. God will cause them to be so much that at the end of the day, you know it's not me. When Christ was born, he had to release a star to shine. To illuminate the eyes of even the blind to see that somebody wonderful has been born. I said, God wants people to see your star. Amen. You don't have to go to Hollywood alone to go and see stars. Amen. In fact, those ones are not stars. So. Hollywood. Those ones, they are not. They are, they are, they, you see, Hollywood is a wood. <laughs> but when we're talking about that, you see, it's also not holy, it's a holy. I don't call it nolly. I don't call it bolly. <laughs> but there's a holy one. There's a, the, the 12 sons of Jacob. God said, you were all, you were all stars. So Joseph saw her 12 stars and 11 of them bowed to him. Christ was presented with a star 
Each one of us have a star. But some people, their stars are up there shining. Others to their stars are slowly climbing up. Others to their stars are on the floor. People are walking over it. But I pray that your star will not be trampled upon by the feet of men. That your star shall rise up to the highest of it. And that God will let your star also shine in the universe. Let your star shine. And let wise men, all fools, sit down. Let the wise men see your star. And let them come with a blessed, with a gold, with a frankincense, with a bar. I say, when the wise people locate you, they will come with blessings. Say amen, somebody. Say amen, somebody. Fools don't honor good things. Therefore, when the wise people saw the star of the Holy One, they came. I said, the wise men that have not yet come to you is simply because not anyone can, they have not seen the star yet. Amen. But next year, by this time, your star has landed somewhere. Amen. In the constellation, Amen. your star is shining, being yes. diamond bright. Yes. And everyone can know that this is the doing yes. of the Lord. Yes. And it shall be marvelous in our eyes. Say amen, somebody. Why don't you clap unto God who is about to put power and light to your star? Your diamond stars will shine. Say amen, somebody. Therefore, God, with this position, will not leave you on earth in vain. Seven things God will deliver you from. Seven things God wants you to avoid. I told you already. And seven things. God will deliver you from. As long as he has given you the presence of his seven spirit, his star upon you, and also the voice of his seven thunders to fight for you. When I say seven thunders, I'm talking about the, the power to confront, the forces of heaven to confront, and they will do it completely. Therefore, number seven is not just halfway done, complete job done. That kind of it is finished. God will bring it to completion. So don't be afraid. Only have faith in what I'm telling you from scriptures. I don't give you hopeless scopus here. If this is a force that God himself has lied to you first, and if God has not lied to you, then make sure that you keep it. Not just tell you some gimmicks from imagination. All right. Job chapter 5, verse 9 to 27. God is going to deliver you from seven things. So when we put the first seven from Solomon, and then we, 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 we add the, this seven from Job, then we understand we are just going to a happy end. Amen. And God wants you to have this knowledge. This is not a message I have for you today. It's just a caveat, I told you. Caveat means warning. Job chapter 5, verse 19 to 27, it says, He shall deliver you in six troubles. Uh -huh. Yes, in seven, no evil shall touch you. Oh, somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. And I'm not reading Solomon. I'm not reading Proverbs. I'm reading Job. And you can see that what Solomon said and what Job said, as if they were all sitting together in the same classroom. And get a prophetic message because this is this, this is divine. No human flesh, no clay can, can can speak this language. Holy God, He shall deliver you. Say, God shall deliver me. God shall deliver me. Tell your neighbor, God shall deliver me. God shall deliver me. He will deliver me in struggles. And in the seventh one, no evil shall touch me. No oh, say it like you have some energy in you. Say, God shall deliver me. God shall deliver me. He will deliver me in some troubles. Yes, in seven, yes, in seven. No, evil shall touch me. no evil shall touch me. You say it for yourself by your faith because you are delivered by your faith. It's a woman. It is not because I am the son of God. It's in your own faith. Your faith has made you hold. Oh. Now, what did you know on your home? It is your only your faith that can work for you. Amen. That's why I said that if you don't, people don't want to make you happy. Slogan, maximum, be happy yourself. Yes. So if you don't make your own confession, it's up to you because others are saying, and then you are sitting down there and you are being too diplomatic. Because Bible said that with the heart, the man believed unto righteousness, but with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. So if you don't, you are a type that you come to church, you want to be too gentle, you don't know, you are missing a part of the theology. Because they believe with your heart, that's correct, you are righteous. But when you open your abuse, your mouth, and you speak it out, it's a confession will bring you what? Salvation. So when the pastor says, says just say it. After all, they used to say a lot of nonsense in town there and sort of you even follow them. Now we are telling the right thing, which will save you. You won't say that one. Uh -huh. Here is where you see the difference between how to keep life and how to lose life. He shall deliver you in six troubles. Yes, in seven. No evil. No evil shall touch you. 
Number one, it says, in famine he shall redeem you from death and in war from the power of the sword. You shall be hidden from the skirt of the tongue and you shall not be afraid of destruction when it comes. You shall laugh at destruction and famine and you shall not be afraid of the beast of the earth. For you shall have a covenant with the stones of the foe and the beast of the foe shall be at peace with you. You shall know that your tent is in peace and you shall visit your dwelling and find nothing amiss. You shall also know that your descendants shall be many and your offspring like the grass of the earth and you shall come to the grave at a full age. As a sheaf of grain ripens in each season. Behold, this we have set out. It is true. Hear it and know for yourself. Say hallelujah. Oh, the way God ended is so beautiful. He said, it is true. It is true. We have said this one. It is true. This one is a detailed prophecy. He said, hear it and know for yourself. Did that know? Know for yourself. Let me uh, re-emphasize. Number one, something God wants to deliver you from. I said, from today through next year and the coming years. He said, he will deliver you from famine. It means hunger may come, but don't be afraid. God has a promise for you. See, amen, somebody. Amen. The Lord said he will deliver you from famine, from hunger, from scarcity, from lack. He will also deliver you from war. So whatever rumors of war you hear coming on earth, it doesn't matter where it's coming from. Be not afraid. Don't join the afraid people. Just be on God's side and let God's word be your eye outlet. Let God's word give you the confidence to stand and don't lose your stamina. He will deliver you from famine and from wars. And you shall be hidden. Number three. You shall be hidden from the scourge of the tongue. It means that it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how much people uh, will gather around to be releasing evil works against you. The curses. The evil works. God said, I will hide you from the damage that their tongues can do against your body, your soul, your spirit. I will hide you from the power of their tongue. But I said, life and death lies in the power of our tongue. How many of you know that one? Uh -huh. And therefore, people are going to use those who hate you. They will use that power of their tongue to curse you. And they will throw bullets against you. And they will throw arrows. Uh, and they will say things that they, will, they wish you to come. We'll call it death wish. They will, they will wish you to, you know, this kind of death that you should die. They will say things to bring sickness upon you. In fact, they always say things to damage you. But Jehovah God said, because you have trusted him, he will hide you from the power of the tongue. He will hide you from the, the, the scourge, the, 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 the punishment of the tongue. In fact, they will speak the word, but it will come to nothing. They will speak the word and it will not stand up. God said, I will hide you. Somebody say, I'm hidden. I'm hidden. Say, I am hidden. I'm hidden. God has promised you, just believe in God and leave Satan. He said, I will hide you. He said, I am under the rock and the rock is hidden. And for Jehovah, that's what? He hides me. God can hide you. His word says, I will hide you. You know, they will speak against you and all of a sudden you appear. They wonder, ah, but we thought he's even dead. The more they are thinking you should die, the more they are thinking you should fall, the more they are thinking you should be destroyed. They think that their stupidness and their stupidity, you know, with their, with their concept, is going to let God embrace them and join their evil team and to destroy you. No way, no way, no way, no way. What they intend for evil, I said, Jehovah God will turn around now and make it good for you. Say, man. You see, the, the, the brothers of Joseph, they thought that, uh, you know, for them to be angry and were hateful and they hated their brother Joseph so much, whatever they planned to do in collusion, the thought of God was on their side. But they were wrong. It was God, rather, who gave the vision to Joseph. And, and Joseph, but they thought it was Joseph himself trying to be a brother, though, so saying. So they wanted to annihilate him, to kill him. And, and, and they tried it, but they lost it. Later on, they refused to bow down. They came to bow down. But I pray that when it happens, don't punish your enemies. Feed them. Bless them. Because Joseph never retaliated. Now all you have to understand is that God has planned that whatever they plan against you, it will not work. 
have that assurance in your heart and enter into the year 2014 being very bold. Not because of what Obama has said. Obama said many, many things. Sir. In fact, he said many things that the, that the Arabs thought he was going to become their, their hero. But at a, at a point, in fact, the Arabs realized that nothing is working. Even Israelites and even some blacks in America, even some of the whites in America, even some Europeans, even some Germans who even embraced him are all careful. Oh, he spoke two nice words, but he couldn't do or perform. Why? Why? Because he's a human being. Obama is not Jesus. Obama can never be Jesus. He is he knows he's not Jesus. In fact, in fact, he will not try to blaspheme at all. But so human being thought Obama has come and the whole world is going to be like a paradise. No, 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 no. He couldn't and he can't. He will do what he's doing and sit down. Only Jesus Christ will come and change everything. Say it somebody. And I want you to have your confidence in him who is called Christ. His word is what I'm talking to you right now. He will hide you from the sketch of the tongue. It means never try to be retaliated. When people curse you, don't also waste your time to curse back. It's, it's, it's a waste of time. When they insult you with malicious, evil words, don't try to respond. Because God has taken it and said he is going to fight for you. Because already where you are heading, in fact, nobody can come there. So relax. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Again, number four. He says, you shall not be afraid of destruction when it comes. In fact, you will laugh at destruction. It means when you hear that some things are going on bad and it, some things are being destroyed around, the people are just being had just got around, flying here and there. Please don't pick any panic. Just keep your heart based on that one. At least remember what I've been telling you right now. If you're working pretty at certain people or whatever is happening, please no, don't let your heart fret. Let what I'm telling you right now come up and remind you that God said, I should not be afraid of destruction. Why? Because he's in charge. Atawale. The Lord is in control over your life. Stop trying to make it yourself. That's why you try to go and lie down and then you start devising evil and plans and wicked and so as that way, basa. Stop it. God said, I am in charge. Stand still and know that I'm God. If you don't stand still, you fidget. And if you fidget, you fall. But when God says stand still, I'm God, he wants to fight for you. He said, the battle is not yours. The battle is the Lord. Say amen, somebody. Amen. God wants to fight for somebody. Say amen. amen. God wants to deliver you from any destruction that has been planned against your life. I said in the year 2014 from today, the enemy has lost it. Amen. Because already the Lord is putting already a pavilion over you right now. As I'm talking, a pavilion, an umbrella is being stretched over your body right now. Right now, right now. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Supernaturally, it's taking place. Your eye don't see, so you don't feel it. But it is the truth I'm telling you right now. Amen. Number five, he said, you shall not be afraid of the beast of the field or on the earth. I mean, beast, beast is not your concern. We don't have lions walking around here. Have you ever seen lions, Germany? Yeah. Unless you go to the zoo, is that right? Yeah. Uh-huh. But there are some entities that are like beasts. Many a time when a, 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 a demonic spirit manifests, they, they come in the form of beasts. They manifest with a beast behavior. Some behave like a snake, some behave like a lion, some sort of like a tiger. I mean, some sexual immorality like a dog or a pig filth. I mean, we have a lot of animals here and also the beasts talking about tigers. I mean, they are destructive, little bears. And they, they, they represent demonic powers. But the Bible says, as we just read, you shall not be afraid of the beast of the earth. Because this funny thing is on earth here. And so that you will come in the form of Men and women who are evil, contaminated and filled. Recently, we watched some film here where we could see a guy was manifest with a tiger spirit. And the way he was behaving himself, you see the air built and someone took one on the floor like a snake. I mean, the, the spirit is there. But if any one of them shall rise against you, Jehovah God said, Don't be afraid. Fear not. Say amen. amen. Say, I will fear not. Will fear. Why? Because God has spoken. Yes. I said, God has spoken. Sometimes, you see, you see, the way you, 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 you respond to God's word, you make God feel so happy to, to ah, because God is his word. So if, if you, 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 know, you dance with the word, God says, ah, man, the way you, you are accepting me, I work for you. But if you receive him, you know, you don't make God feel good. God is too great. And it's a show God, man. It's a show God. Just believe. At least be a fool to believe what God has said. You are too wise. Just believe like a fool. What God has said, not what man. What God, and watch and see if you remain a fool. He who tries to save his life will lose it. And the one who loses their life for Christ's sake, they will gain it. 
We can be like fools for Christ's sake, but remember, we are wise people. Yes. Therefore, I told you, in case you are too wise, try to be a fool. Just to believe what God has said and see what will happen to you. But when you try to be too wise and you don't want to, oh, is it true? Is it true? Can, can, can he? Will he? Okay, good. The way you have treated him, he will let you be the same. That's why he said, oh, my people perish for lack of knowledge, not lack of prayer. No more sense. The Lord said, you shall have a covenant with the stones of the field. Now, this is very, very deep. A covenant with the stones of the field. God is not just trying to say that every stone there, you, you and the soul should have a covenant there. But that means that whatever causes men to stumble to fall, whatever impedes, whatever becomes obstacle, that keeps people from going forward. God says, I will make sure I will deliver you from every obstacle. Say amen, somebody. Amen. God says, I will roll every stone out of your path. In fact, what makes the road before you crooked? In from last year, last three years, God says, I will render the crooked way straight. And the stone will enter into an alliance with you, into a pact and treaty. That when you are coming, he say he's coming. Oh, he's not evil. It's not only Jesus Christ who is the Lord here. He has made us also what kings and priests. We sing on Inorubo to the Lord by stones. What they sing me to? We do on I sing unto him, and the stones will sing to me, and they must open the door. Say by somebody. Amen. So get that in your spirit. And God says again, He said He will make sure that your tent shall be in peace. That means nothing missing in your tent. Your children will not die untimely. They shall increase and become many. And God says that you will have longevity. It means you will go down to the grave at your full age. Now, this 7 plus 7 is your 14. Only a mystery that has been revealed to Fountain Gate Chapel, mamas and papas and boys and girls, you only need wisdom to articulate. Amen. I tell you one thing that if we should go and be on the uh, on, on the world channels and something, then it become a well thorough. But you see, sometimes it pleases God that He reveals things not to mature, mighty men, but to babies. Just Christ said, "Oh Lord, I rejoice because You chose to reveal them to babies yes. and not to those who seem to be very much what no elegant in knowledge, babies." So as baby as you are, God has given you a mystery, a mystery that has been also what. That has been veiled, but now has been unveiled. Yes. Veiled to those who don't have knowledge, but unveiled to those who have that knowledge. He said, for you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom, but to them it's given to them in parables. If you are here in the spirit, everything I said, the Holy Ghost will rise up for you. Yes. So seven times Solomon said, avoid. And seven times God said, I will deliver you from me. Put all together, Jehovah God will take his pure servant to cover up. I said number 14 for us is prophetic. Amen. To ordinary people, it's just a normal. I said to us and for us, it's a prophetic normal. But for the natural kind of human being, it's simply a normal. But we don't wear normals. We don't want to be among normals. We are living the prophetic life of God right now. Amen. Beloved, if you can obey God to avoid the servant, you want to go home, read it. Proverbs, as I give to you, says. 16 to 19, the radium, and I read also the, the book of Job as I gave to you, or get a CD over there, because everything is on it. Because you, you can play it many times and listen to it again and read it and listen to it again and use it now to pray and watch. By the time we come to 31 December 2014, by the will and the grace of God, see if God allow any of these things to happen to you. If God said, I will deliver you, He will deliver you. Say amen. amen. If God said it, if it is in the Bible and it's true, beloved, and you die because some, some, some beast on the field kill you or something like that, it means God has not spoken. If God has spoken, go and try this. Don't tell people, go and test it. Say by somebody. Amen. Beloved, not a single letter or a single jot will be cancelled from this book of the law. Jesus Christ said, Everything you see shall be what? Fulfilled. I've given you that one. It's a very profound, deep thing. One is obedience and one is a reward. The first seven is your obedience. And one you will be, the second seven is a reward. God will reward you. And God will reward you superfluous. Because he will give you his seven spirits to come and monitor you. Watch you day and night without season. Every day, seven spirits are in charge of your life. He will call the seven stars to shine in your path so that your path can be bright so you can see. And wise men shall begin to discover your gift and talent and come to you. And they come not with an empty mouth. They come with gifts. Someone say amen.